Thanks for tuning in to this starting lineup edition, Brickyard 400. That's right, we're back at the Brickyard, and we're going to take a look at practice and qualifying for this Saturday. As the boys are back at the Brickyard. So we started things up earlier as usual in the week with our video, our in-depth preview with CJ Redun of Rotowire.com. Check out the link in the description so you can check out the full video that we did earlier this week, breaking down the race. If you're an F1 fan, you can also check out Mystery Caution because Mystery Caution is actually where we have both of the videos from earlier this week. So that's the race at Hungary and also this race, the Brickyard NASCAR Cup Series Race Preview Edition, both on Mystery Caution. Again, you can get the link in the description for Mystery Caution as well as the link for the video of the preview we did earlier this week. All right, so what are we doing right now? Well, uh, if this is the first time you're with us, we're going to be taking a look at the speed charts for qualifying and practice. You can see right there, you know exactly who was on the pole. Matter of fact, Tyler Reddick was very fast. Very fast because he was fastest in both qualifying and practice. So there's no doubt right now at least at this second, who the favorite should be heading into the race tomorrow. Tyler Reddick, and then you see Denny Hamlin. Now, Denny Hamlin, by the way, will be the favorite. Okay, he was the favorite the other day. And he should, and look, I'm only saying, of course, Reddick you know, should be the favorite based on how fast he was because it's very rare. Okay, I'm, I'm not even sure if it's done, if it's, if it's been done before this year. On, on regular race tracks, but it's been, and I'm, of course, I'm, I, I, you know, excluding road courses, street courses, and such, but even if you include those, I'm not sure how many times we've seen a driver this year in the Cup Series fastest in both qualifying and practice. So that's what Reddick has done. Denny Hamlin, we knew he was going to be the favorite, uh, and he deserved to be. We also, CJ and I both picked him as the, the, the driver to beat, as well we think he should be. And now, the way he looks here, even though he was not first in either session, it doesn't matter. He was second and third in both sessions, so he's right behind Reddick as far as the second fastest car uh, getting ready for this race tomorrow. Uh, other drivers that were good in the top 10 in both sessions, right here, Kyle Larson. Now, Kyle, of course, is going to start the week as one of the favorites anyway, so he'll remain the second choice. Now, now this is just my guess, okay? Re who knows? What, who, I have no idea what they're going to do with Reddick. It's possible they move Reddick all the way to the top of the line. It, it's possible. It's also possible that it's Hamlin, Larson, Reddick. Um, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Larson, fifth fastest at qualifying, sixth in practice. Ryan Blaney, I'm going to move down a little bit further here. Ryan Blaney was also strong, seventh as you can see here in qualifying, and second fastest in practice. So Blaney, not a surprise, uh, because he had a strong car last week at Pocono, the most similar track to the Brickyard. So Ryan Blaney looks like he is going to, of course he's the fastest forward again this week, and he's primed with that second spot in practice. So those are the four drivers as we round out the top 12 and uh, actually we're going to run at the top 10 in qualifying. Yeah, believe it or not, Ryan Stenhouse and John Hunter Nemechek round it out. Uh, but neither of those drivers uh, should, should uh, you know, yeah, it's nice that they were in the top 10, but neither of them posted a top 15 in practice, so I don't really expect them to be too much, uh, you know, of a sleeper or, or a driver to keep an eye on long shot-wise. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can find a better long shot. So those would be the four drivers, Reddick, Hamlin, Larson, Blaney. That doesn't mean that that's the way it's going to, of course, finish out tomorrow. Because, oh, by the way, I tried. Let me include one more. William Byron, which is actually my second pick from the other day. Because Byron was ninth fastest in practice. So I don't want to forget about Byron. Byron was fourth fastest here, as you can see. Ninth fastest in practice. All right, so there's actually five out of the ten. Reddick, Hamlin, Byron, Larson, Blaney. Two Toyotas, two Chevys, and a Ford. Oh, and McDowell, eighth. I mean, how many times are we going to see Michael McDowell with a top 10 practice at a qualifying run? As in, um, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to uh, help him in the race 
or any of these races because he was 27th fastest in practice. All right, so there, there's your top 10 as we just roll along here. I mean, I think it's the best starting position Austin Dillon's had in a long time. Uh, Logano is definitely going to be a threat. Bowman's my top long shot. So I think right there, 13th, I'm perfectly fine with that, especially because he was fifth fastest in practice. So I still love Bowman tomorrow. That is true X. Uh, yet uh, last week, you know, it was he, he finally had a good run on a Saturday, but couldn't make it two weeks in a row because he was 20th in practice as well. And then uh, Bubba, I was hoping for a little bit better from Bubba. He was faster in practice. He was 11th. Christopher Bell, he was the surprising one, only 18th in qualifying, but that's going to help him out as far as odds. Be and, and maybe that's where you want to think about, and we're going to get into this in a little bit, because he was fourth fastest in practice. Uh, moving on down, Busher at 23rd, and teammate Kozlowski 26th. Interesting, because uh, they pretty much have the same setup, right? Well, they're both not fast in qualifying, but they were both top 10 in practice. So they could be interesting. Uh, we'll get into that. Chastain, we've been saying it since last week. Forget it. He's got nothing on 2.5-mile tracks. Okay, Pocono, nothing here. Didn't think he was going to have anything. Doesn't. So forget Chastain. And uh, then Kyle Busch. I mean, come on, Kyle. Really? Th 34th? At least he was better in practice. He, he was, uh, what was he, 16th fastest in practice. So there's that. I don't know what's going on with Kyle there. Nobody knows. Okay. Now, speaking of practice, let's just uh, run through here. Again, uh, Redick, fastest, just like the qualifying run. Blaney uh, made a nice move from 7th to 2nd. Hamlin, just as fast pretty much. Uh, Christopher Bell, that, that's a real significant move from 18th to 4th. Bowman makes the move up from 13th to 5th. There you got Larson, pretty similar to his qualifying position. Now, here's the two Fords uh, put themselves in a much better position after slow qualifying runs. Byron, one of the few that really took a little bit of a drop as far as, you know, some of the drivers we're just talking about here. Byron goes from fourth to ninth, but still top ten. I think that's fine. Chase. Now, Chase was third fastest in qualifying. Twelfth in practice. I don't, I'm not too concerned with the practice run myself. Um... And I, I, I feel good, though, that he was pretty strong in qualifying. So I think Chase is just fine. Uh, let's see. There's Kyle. A lot better than what we saw in qualifying. Chuex, not so good. Logano, not so good. That's, again, a little bit surprising, especially considering how fast Blaney was in practice. Uh, but that's just the story of those two drivers this season. Uh, things have really turned over the last couple of years between Blaney and uh, Logano. Uh, Gibbs, what on earth? Boy, Ty Gibbs, a really bad run, considering he was sixth fastest in qualifying. Uh, I don't know. I just Right now, Ty Gibbs, look, we didn't like him going into this week. Uh, to expect Ty Gibbs to win the Brickyard, his first ever race, wow, that would be amazing. But I also think it would be a big long shot if he did it. And, I'm, and I just don't see that you're going to be getting a good long shot price on Gibbs to try to take advantage. Okay. So, let's try to uh, work this out. Now, again, it's very hard to go over uh, past history at the Brickyard since we haven't seen a race there since 2020. We, we went in detail uh, a lot about the differences of drivers, Pocono, Brickyard, you know, back when the last race was at the Brickyard, what happened there. So, if you want to know all of that, check out the link in the description and check out the video we did earlier this week. But just going over some quick tidbits, again, they, this will be the 28th race at uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway from 94 to 2020. They raced once a year. Chevy was the dominant manufacturer, winning 17 of those races. Ford won six, and Toyota, who looks like they're clearly the fastest today, only two. Okay? Uh, now, how about this? The starting average position, 8.5 out of 27 races, with five pole sitters. The farthest back, 27th. So none of that seems, you know, weird. Keep this in mind. The last three winners, okay, 20, 19, 18, all drove a Ford. The only two drivers that have ever won at the Brickyard in a NASCAR Cup Series car that will be racing on Sunday are Kyle Busch and Brad Kozlowski. 
All right. Uh, CJ and I, again, as I mentioned, we both picked Hamlin as our top play. Uh, Logano was CJ's middle pick. And Gilliland was his long shot. Uh, Todd, unfortunately, uh, didn't have the qualifying run as his teammate did. Uh, he is going to be starting 18th. Actually, he was 18th fastest uh, in practice. Where's Gilliland starting? I kind of just uh, went through him pretty quickly. Let's see. Gilliland will be starting... Oh, it looks like he's starting a little bit better than 18th. Where is he starting, Gilliland? Why did I completely go through him? Todd Gilliland, 18th fastest in practice, and 24th will be his starting position, Todd Gilliland. So it's not looking good so far uh, for CJ's long shot. Uh, my long shot, Bowman, as I mentioned, looks pretty good at this point. So let's uh, try to break this down now. Well, well, by the way, just quickly, Toyota front row fastest in qualifying. Three of the top four in practice, including the fastest driver, Reddick. Chevy had three of the top five in qualifying, even though they didn't have the top two, of course. Um, but none in the top four in practice. Ford ha did not have a driver in the top six in qualifying, but had three of the top eight in practice, including the second fastest, Blaney. So Chevy, Ford, eh, I don't think we can take anything out of this. Toyota, though, look, we can, but I'm only going to take it from the two drivers that represented Toyota, and that would be Reddick and Hamlin because they were the two uh, pr you know, prominent Toyotas in both sessions. Now, as far as the odds and how we think that might affect uh, the, the decision to go uh, with your picks tomorrow, uh, Tyler Reddick was 12-1. to 1. He, had only, he did race here back in 2020, finishing 8th, but he started 13th back then. But Reddick is a good play. And the reason Reddick is a good play is pretty simple. He is one of the hottest drivers right now. Okay, and again, we this is where we went with our picks last week, and it paid off with us with Ryan Blaney, and, and we're just going to keep going with this until we get stopped, and that is we're going with the hottest drivers, and Reddick is clearly the hottest driver out there. The problem is, how far will his odds drop? Do they drop four to one, five to one, six to one? I can't imagine that you're going to get anything uh, lower or higher, I should say, than six to one. So, is six to one good enough? Maybe. You know, five to one, six to one is not bad. Four to one, I don't know. I'm on the border there. But keep in mind, we did like Hamlin at four to one on Tuesday. But that's the problem, too. We already took Hamlin at four to one. So going to another four to one driver, I'm not sure it's going to make out for us. So we might have to just roll the dice, which we probably will. That if Reddick is four to one, we're just going to sit back and hang with Hamlin. Because even though Hamlin was going through a rough stretch, just a little while ago, he made up for it last week at Pocono. We know how good he was at Pocono, or has been the last three three appearances there. And now, he's already off to a great start at the most similar track, uh, Indianapolis. So, um, I, I would still feel pretty good about just going, all right, we didn't get Redick at 12-1. to 1. He's now down to 4-1. to 1. We're just going to have to run with it. But, I will say this, that if you do get 6-1, to 1, that might be a little bit different. I'm willing to take a look at how my money is uh, and, and, and maybe go and hedge a little bit with Tyler Reddick. Okay. And obviously, if you get anything better than 6-1, to one, I jump all over it. Um, uh, Hammond, if he was 4-1 to one on Tuesday, he might be lower than that tomorrow. Um, Elliot, 10-1 to one on Tuesday, third place, 12th practice. So I don't know if that's going to drop that much. And I still think he's a solid play. Um, even though, keep in mind, he only had one top 10 in six appearances uh, at the Brickyard with an average of 17.8. Um, but he never started in the top 10. All right. So that is uh, obviously now changed. So um, if I'm getting eight or 10 to one to Elliot, I am definitely going to consider it. Byron's already on my, uh, on, my on my list. He was 12 to one then. Uh, he's probably going to come down a little bit, but... I don't know how much will come down. Maybe 8-1, to 10-1. to one, So I still think he's going to be a really solid play. Larson, he's going to stay around 6-1, to one, maybe 5-1. to one, Who knows? Um, but keep in mind, he's, he never won it, He never won at this track with an average of 16th. Okay? Um, he, and he never started in the top two rows, which he's not starting here either. He's right outside. It's fifth. But he, he's been in that position before. Um, so it's not like he's looking like Reddick or Hamlin right now. He just looks okay. He looks good. Uh but I'm, 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 why would I take Larson when I think I'm going to get Reddick around the same number? I, I'd be surprised if, if Reddick is, is a much better number than Larson, especially coming from 12 to 1. 
So I, right there, it's, it's, it's no decision. It's Redick. All right. Um, Gibbs, again, I have no uh, – Gibbs was 16-1. to 1. Uh, I think the 33rd – and I think the bad practice run – is going to keep that number where it is. Or I, maybe it comes down a little bit, but I can't go with Gibbs. I just can't. Um, not right now. Blaney, look, we liked him uh, the, the other day uh, with the exception of the fact that, I mean, how can we not like him? We picked him last week uh, at Pocono. But the fact is, it would be two in a row. And we didn't really like the odds. It were like 8-7-1. Uh, they're not going to change. Um, and, and now having Reddick look fat a, a little bit better, I would go with Reddick over Blaney, of course, just because Blaney just won last week. But if you're getting good odds, let's say Reddick is four to one, and you're looking for that next driver at eight to one, ten to one. Well, you know what? Uh, I might have to go with Blaney. It, it would still be Blaney Byron to choose from, and Elliott would be in the mix as well. But I would probably go Blaney Byron. Actually, I'd probably go Byron Blaney Elliott if I hadn't made any picks yet, as long as they're all in that same area. But if Blaney comes down even further, like 6-1 to one or something like that, no. Uh, again, I'm willing to take my chances on a driver winning back-to-back. It's not like it's not going to happen again. It will. It happens once every year. Uh, but I just would rather 100% just go against that. And I think if you do that, it pays off for you. All right, now, let's see if we can get any long shots in here. Um... Let me just post up here because we only have a little bit to go here. Where's the lineup? There it is. Okay, so uh, let's um, let's see anybody the long shots. Well, Logano. All right, Logano was sixteen to one the other day, and he didn't start in the top 10, 12th, as you saw. Remember, uh, if you were watching the other day, he's been up and down. That's a problem. Okay, he's been up, he's been down. He's been up, he's been down. And that's been going on for the last eight races. So I'd be a little bit wary about that, especially since his average starting position at this track before they stopped racing here was 6.2. Here he starts 12th. So, eh, you know, but he's a long shot. You're probably still going to get 16 to 1. Wallace, we liked him at 40 to 1. But, um, you know, I'd be a little bit weary. But, but remember this. He was ninth in his last appearance and started 17th, and he was 3rd in 2019 when he started 15th so the qualifying spot did not really did not deter wallace from a decent run and he's on a good uh kind of you know well, run in his last three so uh, if you're still getting 30 40 to one on wallace why not uh busher and kozlowski uh busher three top fives in his last six 11th at pocono didn't really do do much here um, but if you know, he was 20 to one the other day, if you're still getting 20, 30 to one, eh, why not? He's not, I wouldn't say that's a bad one as far as long shots go for Kozlowski. Uh, he was eight to one. All right. So forget that. No way I'm taking Kozlowski anywhere close to eight to one, but if his odds double, that is a different story. So, um, you know, he was really good here in his last th- uh, four races. Uh, three of those were in the top four with a win and a runner-up uh, here at the Brickyard. So if I'm getting double the money, I'll, I'll take a look at it for sure as a long shot. If he's going to stick around 8 or 10 to 1, I'm not interested. And then we have Bowman, who we've already talked about. He was 30 to 1 the other day. That was my top long shot. We could check out the video and I'll, as I went over why. Uh, not just because of how he's run the last couple of races, but because of how he's run in his history, Pocono, Brickyard, and all that. So you could check that out. Um, anyway, the combination, I went with Bowman as my top long shot, and I really like it now. Um, but I think it'll drop a little. I think you're going to, I don't think there's any chance you're getting 30 to 1 now. I think you're probably going to get around 15, 20 to 1, which I still think is a good number. And Christopher Bell. Uh, let's just wrap up with Bell, because Bell uh, was 12 to 1. Uh, only ran here once, but he started 35th and finished 12th. Okay, Here he starts 18th. And was fourth in practice. So I like that combination. I think you're still going to get around 12 to 1. I can't imagine it's going to come down if it does. And he, and he gets into that Elliot Byron Blaney, uh, you know, uh, um, hand number, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, then I would say no. But if, you're gonna, if he's going to be just outside that, then hey, why not? If I can fit him in, I think Christopher Bell might be a, a pretty good sleeper uh, coming up tomorrow but only if the odds are in your favor 
uh, because right now, uh, look, he was 12th at Pocono and really didn't look good. I mean, I didn't even notice him, did you? And the two races before that, he had bad results, bad finishes, bad luck, whatever you want to call it. So he's in a little bit of a three-race rut, and we don't like the ruts. That's what I said at the Open. We're sticking with uh, what we've been, what's been working for us the last several races. Uh, there's a lot of good drivers out there this season in the top five and so forth, and we've gone against most of them lately because they're not on top of their game. So we're going to kind of do that again. Hamlin is the only one that, 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 that again, because he was strong last week, uh, that, that it works for us. Uh, and we went with him at 4-1. to one. I don't know if you're going to be lucky enough to get 4-1. to one. Maybe you are because Reddick is going to come into the picture. That's possible. But um, uh, I doubt it. It's probably going to be 3-1, to one, maybe even less than that. Uh, if you get anything still close to 4-1 to one after the way he looked today, uh, he is definitely still one of those heavy favorites that I say I will only do two or three times a year. And Denny Hamlin definitely fits into that category on Saturday, less than 24 hours, or just about 24 hours to go as uh, we are recording this video before the race starts. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. Again, description, links, check it out for our show the other day. We go in-depth on everything regarding this race with CJ. We also got a link in the description for CJ's report, his fantasy report at rotowire.com. Uh, and uh, yeah, subscribe, uh, share, uh, like, all of that stuff, very important, even here at Prime Sports Network. Uh, so, it, and again, those videos that we leave uh, the, descript the links for, uh, Mystery Caution, that's the other channel. That's our motorsports channel. That's where you can check out our preview uh, from Tuesday. By the way, guys, we're out of here after today. We are on just like the, of course, just like the Olympics. We will not return for another starting lineup show until the 10th of August. That is going to be uh, for the race at Richmond, the race that returns the Cup Series after the two-week hiatus, two to three weeks, however you want to call it, um, and, uh, and and almost the same, of course, because uh, F1 is going to be gone for about a month, whatever, uh, but uh, CJ will have a report on Belgium, a video that we already uh, uh, put together, so that will be available on Mystery Caution next week for you F1 fans. All right, so uh, I hope you've enjoyed these. We're going to be still doing it, even during football season. And August is still, believe it or not, football season because it's preseason. So that's when we return. I can't believe we're talking preseason football when we're back. But that's what's going to be going on. Uh, we're still going to be doing this. We're going to be doing it all the way through till Phoenix. So uh, that's because you guys uh, seem to like what we're doing here, and we really appreciate it. Uh, keep up those subscriptions. Keep up those, well, the, the subscribing. Keep up the likes. Keep up the shares. We really appreciate it. Have a nice little hiatus, everyone, and good luck tomorrow. If you have any questions, comments, leave it in the comment section. I'll definitely return any questions that you have for me uh, or for CJ. And again, enjoy the race tomorrow. We'll see you soon.